Hi, this is Levi. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to take a quick minute to introduce a few of the other podcasts in the WCF Podcast Network. Tom and Naomi are exploring how we interact in our ecclesial relationships in From the Platform. It's a very in-depth series that is incredibly helpful for understanding and developing compassion and better listening practices. That's from the platform. Sam Taylor from Cleveland, Ohio, produces weekly devotionals in Pause to Consider. Think uh, Mr. Rogers meets uh, Fireside Chat. I love Sam's humble style and think every episode is fantastic. You can find both of those wherever you get your podcasts or on our website at wcfoundation.org. Now, here's the show. Hi, this is Levi. Before we get into the interview with Dalton and Lauren talking about how uh, canceling their wedding due to COVID has kind of really affected their faith um, in kind of, in, in I, th- I think, really some beautiful ways, as you'll see in the interview, I just wanted to lay out the timeline. We, we took this interview on Monday, April 27th, and Dalton and Lauren were married on Saturday, May 2nd, which is very beautiful. It was a, it was a beautiful wedding uh, to kind of stream uh, together with them on Facebook. Um, so uh, now we're, we'll be posting this uh, later. Um, so it is a little bit of a look back. So when we're talking, you'll understand more of the reference to the time. I also wanted to just take a moment to give a special shout out to any other members uh, of, you know, of the Christadelphian body who had their weddings canceled, um, but just specifically uh, James and Rachel Gurney of the Boston Ecclesia and um, Annie and Elliot Brennan uh, from Newcastle in Australia. Uh, she used to be Annie Elton. Uh, anyways, that's a another couple, another few couples, and I'm sure there are others who I just don't know. These are just the ones in my social circle who uh, uh, who also had to have their uh, gatherings canceled. Um, through this whole idea, we we remember that there is a beautiful wedding that we are looking forward to. Um, in the kingdom age. And uh, as you'll hear Lauren and Dalton explain, all of our activities um, here are only in accordance with God's will, and it is right. It is very right for us to say um, God willing. So here's the interview with Dalton and Lauren. Welcome to A Little Faith. I'm Levi. I'm very excited to be here on the phone with uh, my friends Dalton and Lauren. Hi, Dalton. Hi, Lauren. Hello. Hi. How you guys doing? We're doing good. I'm doing good. We're glad to be here in our homes, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a um, uh, an episode uh, on on a little faith, kind of in response to the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, and you guys have been impacted in a really specific way, in that you've had to cancel your wedding, which is heartbreaking. Um, and we want to kind of talk more about that, but when we get before we get there, let's for those of, for people who don't know you, um, what's your guys's kind of story? So I guess take turns. Like, where are you? You know, I guess tell the story of your life in a few minutes. Uh, let's start with Lauren. So I'm 24. I grew up in small town East Texas and in Huntington Beach, Southern California. Um, I currently work as a social media manager for a plant nursery, not babies. A lot of people get oh, that's <laughs> confused funny. when I first say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm up in Northern California now. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm I'm 26 years old. I was I was actually born in the East Coast in Richmond, Virginia, but I only lived there for three years. Um, my family moved to the West Coast when I was three and to the foothills of Sacramento Mm -hmm. in a town called uh, El Dorado Hills and that's where I've been ever since. Um, I am a a financial planner by profession. I work for a small uh, local independent financial planning firm. Yeah, yeah. And I do know you guys. Um, We've kind of grown up, uh, I mean, a few years apart um, and, you know, in CYC and stuff and the CYC activities in California, uh, Bible school and all that. So just, again, for the audience, we do have an existing relationship. I had an invitation to the wedding, which I was very excited about. So how did you guys meet? Uh, well, just through the the connection of Christadelphians, I, we're not really sure at what point we, you know, we didn't really like officially meet. We right. just kind of 
so suddenly became aware of each other. Right. I, but I do remember, you know, we, we grew up in CYC together. So that was where most of our interactions uh, happened. And then, and then Idlewild, I'm two years older than her, but we're, we're pretty close in age. Right. Uh, Lauren, do you have a time you remember exactly like a, a moment where you thought of Dalton as a dating option? Yeah, I have this specific memory. I was 14. I think it was my very first fall conference. I was shooting basketball hoops um, Mm -hmm. on the court wherever the conference was. And Dalton, for some reason, started talking to me, which I thought was super weird. Like, why is this boy (laughs) talking to me? (laughs) Um, And ever since then, I just like noticed him. Like when we were at a conference together, I would like be aware of where he was. So I always say that's when I first became aware of him. Um, He was actually friends with my older sister, um, and I think for a while he didn't really know I existed. (laughs) Um, So that's when I first (laughs) that's when I first remember like really knowing of him and like being aware of him, as I say, and um, considering him an option. I guess. Dalton, do you have a memory like that? Uh, Actually, it's um, funny enough. It's the same memory. Oh, really? I, I very distinctly remember we kind of have a long history of interested in each other, but not doing anything about it. Right. So I very much remember and I very much, it was very much purposeful that I went up to her and started talking to her while she was shooting hoops. I was, I had a little crush on her. Um, and, Already, yeah. and I, I pretty much kind of did for, for years. So it's very interesting because we both went, we like remember these memories, even yeah. though they're very small. Mm-hmm. Because we really didn't interact that much. We didn't really talk very much. I I wouldn't even really say we were friends, really, for right. for years until we were, like, older teenagers. But I think we were both in, we both liked each other. Right. So we remember all those little memories, which is actually kind of a cool story. So then Lauren, I, I mean, I, in my mind, the time I went, that Lauren eventually went to school in San Francisco, right, which is two hours from Sacramento. Lauren, when you did that, was was Dalton on your mind then, or how was the timeline? When did you guys start dating, I guess, is what I'm asking. So I went up to San Francisco to start college in 2014. It was a pretty random decision on my part. I had mm-hmm. never really been to Northern California. Like, I'd gone to the Sacramento conference, but that was it. I had no idea how far, like, Sacramento was from San Francisco. Right. So he wasn't really on my mind until... Um, like the spring conference before I graduated, everyone from Northern, yeah, graduated from high school. Everyone from Northern California that was there came up and like made sure they um, introduced themselves. I knew most of them already, but I was, they were all talking to me. And I remember Dalton telling me how he was going to be gone in Virginia the whole summer. And I definitely was sad about that because I wasn't going to see him at Idlewild or YCC. So he was sort of on my mind with me moving up there, but it wasn't at all a part of my decision to Mm -hmm. go to school up there. And then when, when, when did you guys start dating? We started dating in officially in December of 2015. Right. You guys dated for a while. You got engaged sometime in 18 or 19? October 2019. So three and three quarters of the years. Right. Right. And then I guess that's just six months ago. Uh, What was the, what's the engagement story? So Lauren kind of chided me about getting engaged, you know, like proposing, giving her a ring for, for a couple of years. And, you know, it's lighthearted, but um, I think she, the most important thing was she didn't want to know anything. She didn't want to know, she didn't want to like know what the ring was. She didn't know, want to know that I was doing it. So that was the biggest thing. I had to make it a total surprise. Um, we were visiting my, uh, my grandparents in Virginia. Okay. We, me and Lauren um, and my my parents were also going in we'd been planning for a few months in October 2019 last year and I preceding that I'd started to think okay I'm I'm feeling ready I'm feeling ready to, to do this and so I, I sort of hatched a plan to to do it there I had the I bought the ring um, from a, a local place in San Francisco and had it shipped to my aunt and uncle in Richmond who picked it up stealthily and stealthily delivered it to my dad who stealthily delivered it to, to me and I, I, I wanted to keep it all a big secret which was, which was actually very difficult. There was a few um, 
some deception along the way <laughs> on my part to keep that a secret. And um, I, you know, I just wanted something simple and um, just the two of us. I knew that was something she wanted too. So I actually, it was a rainy day, which, which is Lauren's favorite weather. And I had planned for us to go to the old house where I lived for the first three years of my life. Right, right. And there's a, there's a, there's a nice um, city park nearby it's, um, with like a waterfall and a gazebo. So I planned, okay, we'll go over the, we'll go under the gazebo and then I'll propose. And so we did that. I, I said, hey, let me take a picture of you. I'm going to take a picture of both of us. And so I set up my phone to, you know, like when you like do a timer, like so that it could take a picture of both of us. But actually I put it on video record. Oh, of that. And then, nice. so, and then I proposed to her and then we had it on video, which she didn't realize the whole time. So that was actually pretty cool. And, and she didn't know. It was a total surprise, right? It was definitely a surprise. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. It was funny. Cool. The conversation literally before that was me telling him how he needs to like go to this trunk show that was happening for a jeweler I like. And he was like, oh, maybe I'll go. Yeah. And then he proposed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's very idyllic. That's really cool that you had a video of it and everything. Um, so then you started wedding planning, right? So Lauren, what were your first kind of steps in planning the wedding? The first thing to do was to decide where we were going to have it. Since we live up here in Northern California, we weren't sure should we have it here. All my family and most everyone that was going to be invited is in more of like the LA area. Right. So ultimately we decided to have it in Southern California. Um, so finding the place to have it was like the most stressful, I would say. Um, just because we couldn't really like go places to visit them. So the place we ended up booking, we had actually like never been there before. and. <laughs> It was in Santa Barbara, and I've never even been to Santa Barbara before. Yeah, um, me neither. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, yeah. it's a beautiful, if, if anyone wouldn't know who's listening, it is a it is a beautiful beach town. It's like the northernmost beach town kind of of the L.A. area, and it's gorgeous. What were you kind of, what were you feeling as far as your relationship with kind of God and each other when you first made, that? like you're first making those plans? Because I remember for Jess and I, it was like, it's definitely a high energy time um, making, you know, planning the wedding. Yeah, I definitely feel like through our whole relationship, God has been guiding us. Right. Um, but like before we even started talking, like we weren't even friends yet. And I just like had this feeling like right when I moved up to San Francisco, like I'm going to date Dalton. I'm hmm. going to marry Dalton. Um, and it just was like kind of a weird thing, but I just felt like God's hand through our whole relationship. Everything's just kind of worked out for us. Um, right. Yeah, I feel like he's been there with us, guiding us the whole time. And so you still felt that connection when you started making plans. Mm-hmm. Nothing nothing was disturbed at that point. What, what, was, what were the first couple months of wedding planning like for you, Dalton? Yeah, so it was, I mean, it was a very exciting time. It was like, we didn't rush into it. We dated for almost four years. So right. it, it felt like, okay, we're really like, this has been a long time coming. It was very exciting, like, um, to, to finally be there. And it felt very exciting because like I mentioned earlier, we've had, I mean, at that point, I mean, we've now been interested in each other for 10 years, Yeah. Like, you know, now. So it was like, just kind of one of those things that's like amazing. Like, I can't believe that this is actually happening like this. I can't believe it's actually working out like this. Right. And, and that we're actually getting, like, we're getting married because you know, that's a lifelong commitment. Yeah. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't scary. And I think it wasn't scary at all because we had been dating for so long and neither of us are like super young. So right. it, it there was really no scary part of it. It was really just very exciting. Yeah, it was, ex- it was exciting. Um, like, like, I mean, just again, as an observer, it's, it was, you know, something that many people were waiting for. When did you first hear about the virus or like COVID-19 do you remember like it, it kind of hitting your radars at all or yeah i think for lauren and i it was, it was very different times because i actually have somewhat of a like a historical interest in pandemics and so i've i've studied them a little bit when i i read some like article when it just was breaking like that there was something coming out of um china this new virus this was very early january it was, would have been one of the Right. Like first few days of January, I'm mm-hmm. going to, you know, like January 3rd or 4th. And it immediately was just a little bit on my radar. So I just kind of figured, okay, this will just come and go. 
but at the, in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking, what if it, what if it doesn't? It might not. And um, and then also personally, just a slight bit of I wonder how this could impact our wedding plans. But mm. optimistically, I figured it wouldn't impact. Right. Them. Right. What about you, Lauren? When did it when did it hit your awareness? Um, I wasn't really aware until sort of the beginning of March. Um, I work in marketing, so I started getting a lot of like and I'm customer facing a lot of times. So I started getting a lot of questions from our customers about it hmm. um, with certain events we were having. And that's what kind of made it more real for me. Hmm. So basically in my timeline, it's kind of like the March 16th, March 16th was the Monday that I first stayed home. So that 16th to the 21st of March is really kind of when it really hit as far as, you know, hitting California and the shelter in place order. What was that week like? So Yeah, I mean, things really, transpired quickly I, right it went from we had a wedding shower on march 1st and we had our engagement photos the next day and it was very low on our radar right maybe not really in existent on our radar that this would impact our wedding plans to going you know two weeks later or two or three weeks later being a foregone conclusion that it was probably going to be canceled mm. so yeah that it i think march 16th was the first day that uh, the, the Friday before that, my boss, um, texted us and said, Hey, I'm going to be like, he said he was going to be working from home and that we're welcome to if we want, but I, I figured, no, I'm not going to, I'm just going to keep going into the office. Um, but then that Monday, three days later, he, he texted us and said, Hey, things are pretty bad. Um, I have connections to the state and they're privately saying that things are even worse than people realize mm -hmm. and he said so um you need to work from home wow and i and i went into the office that day and got got everything um that i needed and so i was just i was just you know by myself that day and it was very depressing it was actually a very i remember that monday it was very gloomy like that very first day I, I, it, it impacted me pretty bad but something i've always said about humans is that i really do think that we're very adaptable Mm -hmm. to, to situations and so really what i needed to do is i just needed to adapt to the situation right because by the next day it had kind of set in okay well this is the new normal i'm going to be working from home i'm not going to be leaving much um and that's just the situation right it really just i just needed to kind of mentally adjust to this new way of life what about you lauren what, what was the what was that like that week so I think it was the Friday before, so like Friday the 13th, I yeah. think, um, was the first day my boss had mentioned like you could work remotely. So I just got what I needed to and started working remotely that day. And I previously worked remotely, so it wasn't so abnormal to me. Right. Um, but it was definitely weird. And for my job, I do a lot of like content creation, lots of videos and photos. And that stopped. And that's my favorite part of the job. Like it's the most fun. Um, so that was pretty, getting used to that was kind of weird, like not being able to do that sort of thing. Um, but I'm definitely a homebody, so being home all the time or coming over and seeing Dalton is not something that would usually get me down. Right. So it was definitely just, I feel like surreal is the best word. Like right. it was just crazy because you could just feel everything in society starting to shut down and... Mm -hmm. For us personally, the biggest thing I think has been our wedding being impacted, right. um, which is not a great thing. It's been pretty um, disappointing at times and something we've had to kind of get through. When was the wedding part of that conversation? Like you're, I'm saying you're staying home Monday, the 16th, Tuesday, the 17th, you know, in that kind of first week when you, you, you're, you, you must have started talking about it, right? I don't know when we first talked about it. I'm going to guess it was the beginning of the second week of March or something, we, we, we first said, you know, this might impact our wedding. And we just said, okay, well, it might, but we don't need to make a decision right now. And there's still time for it to not impact it. So for now, we'll just kind of proceed. But I, I think we, I think we, we both subconsciously stopped planning for our wedding at that point, because we we're like, Interesting. we're not going to stop it, but be we we just kind of we stopped actually making plans all the big things had been planned all of the big vendors like where it's going to be food dj photographer videographer all that yeah all the big stuff um and it was kind of crazy because 
the week before kind of that March 16th, um, I had sent out all the wedding invitations. So it was just like, as soon as it kind of that Monday hit, I was just like, oh my goodness, like I just sent out our wedding invitations and the world is like closing down. And, Mm. um, that was definitely something on my mind. Like I felt really bad that I, I knew people were feeling uncomfortable, like getting these wedding invitations and like either having to RSVP no, which of course no one is going to want to do. Right. Um, or saying like, we would love to be there if we can. So we knew with that too, there was kind of like, we couldn't just keep going um, and waiting it out. So we kind of waited it out as long as we felt um, we could before realizing, okay, nothing's changing. Um, there's no way we're going to have this. And then we sent out an email to everyone letting them know that we were going to have to cancel the wedding let's talk about praying so you were praying for it to happen Uh, yeah when so when did you start doing that i probably like became an active part of our prayer the very beginning of march was when it we started like regularly praying that like this would not impact our wedding specifically and and so we prayed but then you know kind of mid-march or so I think we slowly stopped praying for that, to be honest, as it seemed less and less likely. It's kind of a it's kind of a weird thing to be in a situation where you're praying for something, and mm-hmm. yet all the signs look like that is not going to happen. Yeah, what you're praying for, and then at some point you switch from praying that you know that our wedding is not canceled to praying that we can handle this in the best way the cancellation yeah what's that what's that feel like even deciding to cancel it really was an impossible decision like it here we have this great thing like we're getting married we're so excited and then the pandemic hits and we have to decide like we're well we were really forced to decide to cancel but it all the decisions surrounding that have just felt really difficult and no matter what we were going to do it it wasn't going to be what we wanted so praying for god's guidance in all this and helping us make these Mm -hmm. decisions has been a a big part of our prayers um because it's just there's really it's not like there's a right or wrong like we just Mm. didn't know what to do um so that's been comforting to pray about that and know that God is there for us and he'll help us get through whatever it is we're going through. And what I'd add is that yeah, it, it wasn't like there wasn't really much of a decision to be made. It was more of just how long do we prolong the inevitable? So, and, and the amazing thing is how fast things transpired because like I mentioned in early March, it was basically like, virtually no thought that this would that this would impact our wedding to by mid-march being somewhat of a of a a foregone conclusion that we probably have to cancel to late march you know actually okay well we're canceling and that was that was less than a month that that all took place but you know it it, things just got like by mid-march we both were saying okay, we both need to mentally be prepared that we're probably going to have to do something. Yeah, you were talking about it. But Mm -hmm. we, yeah, but, but we, but I said, you know, we probably, the latest we could wait is like mid-April before Mm -hmm. we have to make a decision. So I said, for now, we can just wait it out. And then from mid to late March, things just got worse and worse and worse in the United States. Um, And, you know, laws started happening, stay in, at home orders and then i at that so by mid by the last week of march it was like okay we're going to have to cancel our wedding now we just need to figure out what the steps we need to do to you know contact vent um, vendors contact the attendees and and really just figure out how we're gonna what we're gonna plan for now you know it, it wasn't really much of a decision we knew we had to do it and we knew that with all this stuff going on and there's people that are getting sick themselves and that they're, they are worried about, you know, losing their job and things like that. Right. That it's really not that much on most people's radar, our wedding. And so we knew that we kind of needed to, we knew that 
like for the good of everyone, we really needed to just kind of cancel it. Um, and just, mm-hmm. okay, it's, you know, like it's canceled, just like, you know, don't stress about it and <laughs> just kind of like move on from that because yeah. you know, everybody had so many things going in their brains about all this crazy stuff. Yeah, I think you're right to say that through all of this, there's been some of our, like, you know, friends or ecclesial members who are suffering in, like, way much greater and, like, possibly more longer-lasting ways, you know, um, in, in, in our ecclesias and in our communities. But it still was heartbreaking, I mean, as an attendee, as, a, as an invite, as an invitee to your wedding to, to get that cancellation. I'm going to share you. I'm actually going to pull up. I found the email. Um I want. I thought it would be interesting to read, and you guys put this beautiful picture. Um, well, we regret to inform you, you have can We have canceled our wedding on May second. This will not come as a surprise to you, but it's still disappointing to have to officially cancel. We waited as long as we felt reasonable, but reasonable. But the COVID nineteen pandemic is not slowing down yet, and we feel there's basically no chance that a large gathering will be at at all prudent or even an option in a month from now. That's what we're going to do now. We don't know. We're still processing all of this, but. Once we know what we're going to do, we will be sure to let you know. If you would, please let us know that you've gotten this message and stay safe, Dalton and Lauren. You guys have this beautiful picture of the two of you looking um, kind of away from the camera. Um, it was a downer to get that, though. Just, again, such a heartbreak for us. Do you remember the moment you guys sat down and said, okay, we're canceling? Like, I, oh, I kind of, I think I do. I think I do when I said, okay. We're canceling, so we need to cancel the venue. We need to contact the photographer, the videographer, the the food person, the lights person, everything. Yeah. And then we need to to let everybody know. I, I think yeah. I do remember that moment when it, it was like, okay, the inevitable. Like we need to bow to the inevitable. Yes. Do you remember that, Lauren? Yeah, we were. We sat down at Dalton's computer. We were trying to gather everyone's emails. Luckily, we have the address book with most. <laughs> everyone in there and just writing like one of the most disappointing emails ever um it was just i don't know it was just surreal like i couldn't believe just like the month prior a month ago i had been sending out all of the wedding invitations um and now we're having to cancel it and you you brought up the picture and we that was from one of our engagement photos and it just felt right because it wasn't the happiest of all pictures, um, but it was, I don't know, somewhat hopeful or something. Yeah, we, we did, we purposely put that picture in there to kind of give some hope and, and you know, for those on the podcast who can't see it, it was a picture of me and Lauren holding each other and we're looking away from the camera and we're looking off into the mountains and it, it felt like the picture encapsulated the mood, which was like, there's this trial, we're going, we have this trial ahead. Um, mm. which would have been visualized in these mountains. But yeah. We've got each other and we're going to get through it together. Yeah, it was, um, uh, you know, I, uh, again, I, I can't imagine the feeling of having to, to cancel such a major event for you guys. Um, were you ever angry? You must have been angry, frustrated. I mean, beyond disappointed, I guess. Yeah, I definitely think I felt anger at points and just sadness and just like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, right. I, one of the things that during planning was, our planning was disrupted for a month or so. Um, my brother died um, about a month after we got engaged. And so I, we had decided, um, and I just didn't want to postpone something. Her brother died less than a month after we got engaged, which obviously just it, it it's kind of it's crazy how sometimes life works like that. October twenty nineteen was I would, was like I'd say our, our happiest uh, month of our lives, and then November 19, twenty nineteen, the next month was you know the the saddest uh, month of our lives, you know back to back. And so obviously we just we just kind of like okay we can't like wedding plans just at that point we hadn't when he died we hadn't picked a a date or anything um, so we still had it was still much in the process but we just okay we got to put it on the sides and we just just obviously particularly Lauren just can't mentally handle planning that just has to go through this 
you know, this grieving process. So, but after a few weeks of that, Lauren, I think she, she started to get a, a, a sort of a resolve to her that um, I'm not going to let this terrible thing stop me from doing something that, that is good. And, and she, she, would, she told me, and she repeated this phrase, I'm not going to let a bad thing, you know, I don't want to let a bad thing postpone our wedding. Before Kieran died, we had talked about a um, time frame of like April, May. And so then we started then after when she felt pretty resolved and felt like she could start planning again. Then we said, okay, well, let's try for the same time frame as what we said before. Mm -hmm. So after going through that and not postponing our wedding for the worst thing that has ever happened to me, it was just crazy. Like my brother died. We didn't postpone our wedding. Mm -hmm. Like I, and now there's this pandemic that's, forcing us to cancel it like that was just and I basically said that like all the time I just couldn't believe that it was happening but at the same time I still had that same sort of resolve that Dalton was talking about like I didn't want to postpone our wedding for a bad thing um because our wedding is a happy thing it's a good thing we've been looking forward to it we've been together for over four years now it just doesn't feel right to postpone our marriage and this new chapter in our lives together because of anything bad happening. It did, mm. it did feel very defeating when we had to cancel our wedding because it was like Lauren was able to get through the, the worst mm. event of her life and still have this mentality of we're going to do things as we planned. We're going to have a happy wedding and we're going to look forward to it in the same time frame as what we imagined. And now this pandemic virus is, is going to stop us from ha having that happen. It, it definitely was a very defeating feeling going through that. What was the feeling in your in your prayers and your relationship and I mean with, with God I'm saying? like I think just asking God to be with me. Um, I found that when these bad things are kind of happening I can't always focus that great in my prayers. Um, so just I think Dalton told this to me like the week after my brother died just ask God to be with you, ask him to help you. So that's something that I've been repeating in my prayers daily for five months now. Um, mm. And that's about as much as I can focus on a lot of the times. Um, and I know he is there with me. So I don't think like I definitely haven't lost that. And that's what's helped me get through. Mm. Um, these bad times yeah that's a it's a rough one i think you guys have a beautiful attitude um you know dealing with because this is a loss you know it's a different kind of loss obviously than kieran was but that's what you are grieving a real loss but um so may 2nd is uh coming up what are you guys doing so after we canceled our wedding on i think it was april 1st or 2nd when we sent out the email um we kind of sat on it for a week or so and with really no plan. Like, I don't know, you know, basically it was our, we don't know. And we started mulling options and I think it was hard. I think particularly Lauren had to, had to mentally adjust to something different. Um, and so it took some time, but I think, but, but about a week, about a week ago, Lauren said, you know what? I. I think I can finally feel good about a, a something, a, a plan, another plan. Mm. And so we started well, formulating that about a week ago, and we're still formulating it. So okay. this is obviously very last minute, um, but we are planning on, in spirit of the not canceling, or not postponing our wedding um, for a bad event, we are planning on still doing it on May 2nd. Um, and it'll just be, you know, private, me and Lauren. And then if we can, at all possible, live stream that to others to be able to be part of it. Um, that is our plan. But it is a very last minute production and we are still <laughs> working together the pieces. So. Yeah. But that, that's where we stand right now with it. Well, talk more about that. that um, 
Oh, oh, what did you just, you just said something and it hit me. Oh. Then I just started thought it, just, then I just started thinking about live stream productions. Um, <laughs> uh, you're just saying, I guess, ready to feel something, like ready to, ready to feel positive. Talk. Yeah, so it was definitely hard for me to imagine a different kind of wedding day. Right. Like we had already, we planned the wedding. I had it in my mind, how everything was going to go. I envisioned it. All of these different memories we were going to make with our friends and family. We're going to have all the photos from that. Photos are like a huge deal to me. So that mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. really hard for me to think about not having all of those family photos because I feel like that's where you get your best family photos is at your wedding. Right. Um, so I had to process all of that and we kind of came up with a plan B and then because of all of these closures everywhere that got canceled. Um, and then we I just didn't really know I didn't know what I wanted it felt like whatever thing I thought of or we talked about it was just not what we wanted it was it was an impossible decision to make because um, no matter what it wasn't what I planned for it wasn't what we talked about having um, and then I was after talking to some of my friends I they had kind of mentioned things like you can still make it special there's still things you can do and um talking to dalton about like this is may 2nd will be our wedding day and it will mm -hmm. be truly about us um it's gonna be basically just us um and then at a later point we'll be able to celebrate with everyone and then we'll be able to focus on celebrating with our friends and family and everyone that's supported us through right. all of this yeah you guys are going to have the best one year anniversary party ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's looking yeah. like it might be another yeah. year until we can have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I heard this concept a different place, but, um, I love you guys, you can't see it now, but you have an origin story. You have a clear time and a story and a thing that, and an experience that's going to bond you together you know, for forever, you know, like, um, it's not this big, glorious, beautiful wedding, you know, that you had imagined, but it was going to be this experience, you know, and this incredibly hard year you've had, you know, um, so in a way yeah. that is a blessing, um, you know, doesn't feel like it, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, really for us the just make sure, making sure we have the attitude of just life's what you make it, make it and like, just whatever happens just accept that and and roll with it as best you can and going back to what i said about how that first day when i was when i worked from home in in mid-march and i was really down and i just i kind of had to process it and i really i think it just i came to the to the feeling of okay well this is this is the new normal and mm -hmm. and that's that's fine that's that's fine and and i've i've actually been enjoying it um for the most part and because I've tried to maintain an attitude of being thankful for what I have rather right. than disappointed for what I don't have. And I do actually think that gratitude plays a big role in that part. Um, mm -hmm. Because, I mean, bottom line is, like, me and Lauren have, we still have so much to be thankful for. We may not have the wedding day that we planned, but that's just one day. And throughout all this pandemic it, it it would feel very insensitive and, and self-centered of us to be too you know woe is me about what canceling the wedding when other people are you know getting sick their family members are dying mm -hmm. um, people are losing their jobs the financial security is going away and you know as of right now we feel very very blessed that we both have not had any financial impact Mm -hmm. and we are still able to work from home safely without being in harm's way. We both have, you know, places to live. We, we have each other, um, and we're not sick. And so we feel very blessed, actually. And I actually, in many ways, I almost feel more blessed now than before all this happened. Hmm. Sometimes it gets me down, you know, oh, man, that I'm not able to have what we we're not able to have our wedding as we thought, but for the most part, I feel very grateful still because I, I do, I do think of all the things that we have and, and, and there's really not any room to be 
too to 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 be too upset at what's happened when when we think of things in that way. Mm. And through this whole time, we've just tried to remember that God is in control of everything. And I don't know if you noticed this, Levi, but on the invitation at the bottom, we put God willing. Mm. Um, obviously, our big wedding was not God willing, but so far we're planning to still be able to get married. And that seems to be a part of his plan so far. A lot of places you can't get marriage licenses, we've heard, but we were able to get one. So it's actually oh, legally possible <laughs> for yeah. us to get married. And um, yeah, there's our it'll just be our story, however it happens. And um yeah, well, no, it, yeah, that's it. It is a, uh, it will be a beautiful story, um, because it's going to end up with you guys married. I think it's what God wants, and and I know it'll be a blessing to many people. Man, thank you guys so much. Uh, I, I mean, I selfishly very much wanted to have this conversation, you know, like off the record. So this is yeah. this has been uh, it does, fantastic. And, and thank you for inviting us because it does help to to vocalize how we feel. And yeah. um, I think something that I've, you know, like learned about God through this is that mm. ultimately his, his plans are not always our plans. And, um, you know, Lauren mentioned that we put the, the little but very important phrase of God willing on our invitation. And that's, and obviously that didn't, come to fruition as we thought and and so it's taught me that you know if we can't outplan god and we have to accept that sometimes we're not going to be given everything that we want and that's okay and um in the end we have to be grateful for what we have and we have to realize that there is a plan for things there's a reason for things and and by maintaining that right attitude um it helps us to get through this and I, we can look back on our lives, both of us and think of things that we wanted to happen in our lives that we prayed to God that would happen and they didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those things we can already, we can look back with, um, the, the introspection and realize that we were better off than not happening. And we were better off the, the way, um, life happened and, and we just have to, we just have to be, um, have the faith to realize that that, that must be why this is happening. Mm. Have you learned anything different about God, Lauren, in the last, I guess, yes, you have. The answer is yes, you have in the last year, but I guess what, uh, anything specific you wanted to share? I think it's just it's made me really think about my priorities in life um and it's made me realize how reliant i am on god and how mm. i i can't get through this on my own and i need um god and i need people in the ecclesia and i need dalton and my family and friends um so i don't know if i feel like i've learned something totally new but it's definitely mm. feels like like newsflash like it's reinforced it, what you thought yeah it's reinforced things i thought and things i knew but maybe things i wasn't always actively thinking about that i should have been thinking about more yeah relying on the lord truly like really truly is kind of what you're talking about mm -hmm. yeah well thanks again guys um this has been a beautiful uh conversation i really appreciate you guys sharing um with everyone i think uh like you're saying, this has been a dis you know it's a disruption for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. I think you have had a real you know again a real loss. Like you're saying to compare it to financial you know losing your job or something or kind of life being technically more stressful, you know is not it's not a fair comparison. But it is still a you know it's a, it's a loss. You guys have had a loss and um, but like you're saying it's gonna be okay. You know it's gonna be okay. We're gonna build memories in a different way you know, if this is not the end. So love you guys. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. We, we appreciate you. And, and, um, you know, it, it, it just, sometimes when people are going through, through difficult times, it just takes a, just a little bit of, you know, just a small thing to make them feel good. 
I know you you texted me, you know, a few weeks ago saying, hey, you know, we're praying for you guys about your wedding. And, um, really sorry this is happening or something like that. And, you know, I was like, oh, that's nice that, you know, Levi was thinking about us. And, mm-hmm. and, and there's been, you know, lots of moments where people have been, have just reached out to us in little or big ways. And they are, it definitely helps to have, to, to know that you have people that you can lean on that, that are there for, for us. And, and, um, you know, it actually, is, it's interesting that with this coronavirus, I was thinking is, has there ever been a time in human history that has so united us against mm. one thing? Like in wars, there's always, you know, one side or the other. And, right. and with this, we all know what's going on because of the, because of how connected we are to the world. So we all, everyone in the world pretty much knows about this thing. And while there might be people that blame, you know, one side, like blame certain people more than more than other people, there's still a united feeling that everybody wants this to not be happening. Right. We're united in that regard. And I don't know if there's ever been such a such a feeling. And whether it's you're losing your job or getting your wedding canceled or getting sick, we're all dealing with this. Right. So I think we can all strengthen each other because we, we know that, that we're all dealing with this in uh, one sense or the other.